ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to the q2 and half year ended 30th september 2023 conference call of bank of maharashtra as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on a touch tone phone please note that this conference is being recorded we have with us from the management shri as rajiv managing director and chief executive officer shri ab vijaya kumar executive director shri ashish pande executive director and all general managers of the bank i now hand the conference over to shri as rajiv thank you and over to you sir thank you so much to all of you for joining this con- conference call as you are aware today our quarterly financial results for the half year ended as well as the quarter ended 30th september 23 just concluded by around 2 o'clock and we had a press conference also and i will just go through this important financial parameters so you might have already gone through that then we should, we shall have the one to one uh, interaction regarding any queries so the total business of the bank grew by 23% to 422000 crores and total deposit is increased by 22% to 239000 crores and the gross advance is increased by 24% to 183000 crores CD ratio of the bank is at 77%. While the asset quality growth in India declined to 2.19%, and net in India reduced to 0.23%. Provision coverage ratio improved to 98.4%, and net profit increased by 72% to 920 crore for the quarter, with operating profit. growth of 31% reached 2920 crores net interest income increased by 29% to 2432 crores net interest margin improved to 3.89% as on 3923 cost to income ratio improved to 38% though it is slightly more than the last quarter that was basically additional some 60 to 70 crore provision we have made for uh, employee expenses because uh, employees uh, discussion is going on so if it is required it may be required uh, otherwise we can raise it back so roa of roa is improved to 1.37% and the return of equity improved to 23.25% CRIR improved to 17.61% of which tier one is 13.72%. Profitability is concerned net profit is 72% growth rate to reach 920 as against 535 crore for last Q2 financial year 22. The growth rate for the quarter to quarter basis it is 4.27%. operating profit shown a growth of 31% to 1920 crore as against 1462 crore q2 fy22 the same has improved by 3% on q or q basis nii grew by 29% on year on year basis to 2432 crore as against 1887 crore for q2 financial year 22 nii growth on quarter to quarter sequential basis was 4% net revenues for q2 financial year 23 improved by 20, 29.73% to 2389 crore to 3100 crore the same is increased by 4.5% on q or q basis cost income ratio for is 38.04 while 37.23 was the quarter ended 36 2023 and 38.82% for q2 financial year 22 roa is 
as against 0.92 for Q2 92 and 1.33 for Q1 financial year 23. ROE also improved to 23.25 percent as against 18.32 percent for Q2 financial year 22. Mm. Profitability for the half year net profit increased by 83 percent to 1,802 crore as against 987 crore for half year corresponding 39.22. Operating profit has shown a growth of 42% to 3,784 crore on year-on-year -year basis, as against rupees 2,664 crore for the half year under 39.22. Net interest income grew by 34% on year-on-year -year basis to 4,772 crore for the half year under, as against 3,573 crore for half year under 39.22. Fee-based income is also grown by 18.77% on year-on-year -year basis to 723.96% for the half year under. Return of assets improved to 1.35% for the half year as against 0.87 for half year 39.22. ROE also improved to 23.31% for the half year under 39.23 as against 16.9% for the year for half year under 39.22. Uh, regarding uh, RAM advances grew by 24.38% on year-on-year -year basis. Retail advances is grown by 20%, MSME by 26%, and agriculture advances by 30%. Capital adequacy improved to 17.61 with a CET1 of 12.28%. During the half year and 30th September, bank has raised equity capital of 1,000 crore through QIP and tire to capital of 515 gross. As regards asset quality, gross NBA, as I already told, it was 2.19 as against 3.4 as of 39.22. The same was 2.28 as of 36.23. Net NBA declined to 0.23 as against 0.68 as of 39.22 and the same was 0.24 as on 36.23. Provision coverage ratio improved to 98.4% as against 96.06% as of 39.22. The same was 98.37% as on 36.23. The bank holds cumulative COVID-19 provision of rupees 1,200 crore as of 30 September 2023. So these are the major highlights of the performance. Now. I think we can go ahead with one-to-one -one, uh, question answers and our entire team is there to give the figures whatever required and if you are readily any figures is not available, please give your email ID and we will provide all the details to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of Darshit from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yes, yes sir. sir. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Very afternoon. Uh, so I just have uh, two basic questions. Uh, I wanted to understand what is your loan book growth and uh, credit cost outlook for the next two years, and uh, also if you have any capital raising plans. As of now, the loan book growth is 23 to 24% as of now. And uh, the expected credit growth will be around 20-21% uh, during the current year. As we are capital raising, uh, as of now, 17.61% is the capital adequacy ratio. And uh, 1,800 crore profit is already booked and we expect that uh, the next half year also 
uh, profit will be uh, booking. So, including that profit of the current year, we are expecting the capital adequacy ratio may go to around the 90%. So, there may not be any require, requirement for raising R1 capital at present. Okay. Okay. So and uh, if it is required, uh, uh, Q3, we may go for some uh, tier 2 or tier 1 capital maximum of 5. That is a depth instrument. Bones, we may think of that. So, equity may not be required yet. Okay. Okay. Thank you. move to the next question. Our next question is from the line of Ashok Ajmera from Hatchcon Global. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, good afternoon. Good evening, sir. And uh, once again, very rich compliments to you, sir, and the entire team for the fantastic performance, continuing the performance of the bank. If you see slide four, you know, out of 15 boxes, uh, 13 are upward only. Only two are downward, that is gross NPA and net NPA, which shows the excellent performance of the bank. And uh, even if you look at, I mean, year on year, it is very good, even on quarter on quarter basis also. Everything, you know, net profit is going up, your yield, <clears throat> NIM is going up, uh, ROA is also going up. So there is nothing much uh, to comment uh, or to be negatively spoken about it. I have got only a couple of observations and questions, sir. One is on our uh, going forward on our credit growth. If you look at the credit growth of the half year, it is just uh, about 8,000 crore if you compare it with the March March figure. Because now let us look at the financial year, you know, 23-24. So if you take if the 21-22% growth of 38,500 crore, only 8,000 crore has achieved in has been achieved in till September. So uh, uh, can we say that about 30,000 crore will come in only in this next two quarter, the growth in the uh, credit. Similarly, on the overall business, a growth of almost about 75,000, 80,000 crore is expected to make it to 500 lakh, you know, 5 lakh crore uh, business. So on both the fronts, because deposits are seen to be declining in the last quarter. So one one question on that, sir, if you can elaborate. And actually, net-net, if the growth is 8,000, but what actually is the growth in the quarter, uh, credit growth in the quarter, the gross credit growth in the quarter? Sir? Yes, uh, you have rightly observed that uh, credit growth as of YTD level, I think it is 4 to 5, 5 to, 5 to 6 percent. And uh, we have so secure assets, IBPCs, during the half year, and uh, that already credit is uh, come down basically because of our sale of IBPCs during the half year. That is number one. That is in the market, and uh, after the three months, nine, six months period, these IBPCs will come back. So normalization will happen and in the second half. And second point is that, Generally, the growth rate, if including this IBPCs, our growth rate will be now already grown by around the 89%. And during second half year, only the major growth rate will be around slightly more than the first half year. So this year, we are expecting 20, 21% growth of credit. I think we can easily be possible. That is number one. So number two is deposit growth. During Q1, the deposits was uh, the same thing what we have done. The reason was the market interest rate is uh, we have given more importance for bottom line, profitability, and NIM, and uh, margin protection. So when the interest rate is gone up and the CDs, 
we have not gone to cds or any kind of differential deposits uh, so when the deposits we have brought down and around 7000 to 8000 crore access slr was there that we have deployed for the credit so that in the existing assets assets itself we could able to get additional 1 to 2000 additional margin through the shifting so still we have around 12000 to 14000 crore additional access xlr is available if it is possible it may be possible that 4000 to 5000 crore we can bring it this access xlr because though gsec is improved slightly but the yield is not up to the mark like that because our average yield on advances is around 8.93 that means almost 9% while well, the yeah. tenure is uh, yielding around 7.3 to 7.4 so there is difference of 1.7 to 1.8 that was we have that and as and when it is required uh we can any time we can do and you may be aware that we have the lowest in the interest rate regarding deposit is concerned very well the lowest that which reflected in our nim as well as nii growth and the cost of deposit such cost of funds also so the strategy which we are following is the bottom line has to be given more important but the growth we will continue to drive sir my second question is on our digital initiative i mean we are going very strong on that and in every yes. quarter we get a so very good uh, ed mr uh, uh, pandey ji will explain you digital initiative yes sir yeah please ask no sir i just want to know the uh, you know digital journey where we have allocated a good amount of uh, almost about 1000 crore rupees a year so so like uh, how many modules are ready and how many uh, such products are ready which has started giving delivery or which has started be, i mean put put in the use and where how are we going forward to implement the entire digitalization uh okay i think uh, your question is having three four dimensions so quickly i will try to you know address all those three four so this is correct that the bank is having around uh, 7 to 800 crores of expenditure on the budget both revenue and capital on the it side and the last uh, i think uh, almost for one one and a half year a lot of uh, rfps and other things are in place also the bank is having the digital transformation consultant on board and uh, so the bank is uh, as present working on the digital journeys Uh, digital operations and digital compliance all the three and uh, if you ask uh, you know the prior also uh, some of the analyst have asked some questions on the loan growth and the deposit growth and other things so i think this will uh, this uh, the, the the reply will supplement to even that also so now uh, right now we are actually having the the stp journeys on the asset on the liability and all on the services side all the three and also on the fourth which is insurance third party products so as of now almost i think 12 to 13 15 journeys we have stp online and uh, the video kyc is there in which almost more than uh, approximately 100 accounts we are opening per day and uh, coming to the pm samiti which is also uh, even the government initiative but then we have made it fully stp right now and uh, we have done the poc and other things on that so it is actually how it is helping is on the business front uh, you know getting the things done very fast second is the credit quality so it is the when you know the technology comes and when the data aggregation happens across the lines what sort of uh, things you want under the bre so both the things are happening on the services front so we have already launched online nomination Uh, and uh, for the customer and second is you know our debt claim settlement so like this we are having four five things which already on the services side and the next is on the insurance so two three journeys on the non life and two on the health already is online so if you ask uh, this the entire package so one is on the journey side second is when it come to operations probably a bank of maharashtra is the one of the public sector bank having the 17 robotic process automation uh, journeys uh, processes live and uh, at least another 20 are in production means on the development 
and this quarter by the time we meet next time probably we will be crossing almost 40 of them so i think this is one of the highest in the public sector now what is happening with this rpa is the bank is in a position to have a robust reconciliation very good customer service cost optimization and the most importantly which a regulator sees is the reconciliation and the compliance so this is the second part coming to the third part uh, where you see the other things you know uh, which are moving to back offices so the bank is also working on the various back offices uh, things like the service which are mostly done by the branches so the thing are identified which are in the branches as a repetitive nature which are not productive and making the branches and the staff free for the servicing of the customer and you know for the more business terms so i think these are five and six the various key areas in which the bank is working and uh, as i said on the compliance side the entire uh, the 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 audit function we are now taking it to back offices using ai ml so as of now uh, we have already in panel 54 i think another 50 or a fintech companies are getting in panel so probably again more than 100 right now more than 15 fintechs are already on board with the bank and i think this quarter you will see another 15 to 20 getting on boarded which probably again would be the highest as far as the usage of fintech is concerned which is all under the outsourced policy of the regulator and within the ambit of the guidelines of the bank and the regulation so i believe we could answer you what you wanted to know that what technology piece is going to help on the business side on the operation side on the customer convenience side and also on the compliance side is it so thank you sir sorry to interrupt uh, mr ashok ajmera may we request that you return to the question queue for follow up questions as there are several participants waiting for their turn thank you our next question is from the line of vivek ramakrishnan from dsp mutual fund please go ahead sir Yeah, hi, this is Kunal from DSP Mutual Fund. So my question was on the restructured book, which I assume all of them would have come out of restructuring as of now. So if I could look at the numbers uh, in terms of the personal loan specifically, so there was quite around five six percentage of the book which was written off during the half year. So how has been that book behaving of late? and also in terms of your new generation in terms of the personal loans how that book is behaving given the concerns sounded by rbi as well as the market participants that's it uh, yes uh, as far as personal uh, loan book is concerned it is around uh, 1000 uh, 1800 uh, crore today and uh, the npa is under that is 0.33% uh, as uh, what you uh, is uh, probably uh, thinking that the stress on the uh, personal loan book is uh, because uh, is not that high because we are, uh, we are very careful in selecting those it is given to all salaried people uh, who are also seeing the civil and all so all risk parameters are placed in and uh, as far as restructured book is concerned you said that restructure there are certain retail accounts which are restructured which are those accounts which were restructured during the rbi framework uh, resolution framework during the covid period uh, which are continued because we are given that benefit to all of them uh, and that gradually those are um, now reducing uh, from back there but in that case the repayment is uh, in most of the account is regular so we do not foresee uh, in, in such account Uh, any material difficulty of course with the uh, inflation is lingering some uh, rate of interest is uh, definitely high so that uh, we are uh, keeping watch uh, closely uh, but think, still uh, i can supplement ha please sir. yes i think uh, uh, you are asking about uh, the probably the covid uh, loan book on the personal loans so uh, i think because that was one of the things which we meant to that point of time actually it is behaving well and uh, if you see the last quarter also there is a quite a good amount of reduction uh, in the book so i think that is one of the thing which you can always see from the rp2 point you know other thing now when you came for a, a regulatory guidelines on on uh, the uh, personal loan that is unsecured ones so let me tell you <laughs> that uh, 
the, uh, the, if you see the journey of the last one, one and a half, two years in the industry, uh, put together both public, private and LBFCs. So there is a good amount of uh, the business generation that took through the digital journeys on a personal note. Actually, that is the key area of concern from the regulator side probably. But as far as, uh, you know, Bank of Maharashtra is concerned or maybe any bank is concerned, there are four things which are very particular on a loan book. One is the underwriting, second is the target group, third is the collection mechanism, and the fourth is the risk mitigation. Now, as far as the Bank of Maharashtra is concerned, if you will not see that our loan book rising very, you know, uh, like NTV and ETV. So, certainly right now we have moved to ETV, number one, where we have time-tested people over for the car loans and uh, the, the housing loans. So, the risk is mitigated, point number one. Point number two, coming to, we have some tie-ups actually with some esteemed organizations which are triple A and which are government. So, there we have given a very lucrative terms and uh, on that basis, we have actually done a good business on a personal loan. So STP, yes, we are coming, then we have rigorously tested and maybe we going forward we will be bringing, but then we are very much concerned uh, on the risk mitigation side, on the underwriting, target group, as I said, even the collection mechanism and the risk mitigation on the board. So it is well, uh, uh, well under control as far as the RBI regulation is concerned and the bank is very much uh, concerned about that. Thanks a lot for the detailed answer. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Hatim Brochwala from JM Fi Mutual Funds. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hello, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so my question is on provisions. So I see that the provision number is on the higher side uh, for the non-NPA uh, part. So if you can explain um, the reason for it and also mention what is the accumulated extra provision which we are holding in the balance sheet. Uh, yeah. So during this quarter, uh, the overall standard provision is 362 crore. Out of that, uh, 325 crore we have made ex uh, additional provision. So this is uh, not required as per the RX norm, but you know that the present current economic scenario and war looming situation where that uh, there is a crisis in Gulf, uh, crisis is going to start in Gulf countries and it may impact on the crude oil and definitely the other industry. For that, on the safer side, we have created a 325 crore provision. provision. And rest of the provision are uh, due to increase in advances. And uh, uh, you know that la uh, last quarter we have created 250 crore ECL provisioning. And uh, uh, maybe that after two years, RBI will come with the uh, guideline. RBI made, uh, in fact, the bank to implement the uh, in India. At the time, these provision what we created, it will give us comfort while making the provision under. India's guideline. Uh, and sir, how much is the accumulated extra provisioning on balance sheet? Ah, uh, sir. Besides that, we are holding 1,200 COVID provisioning. So that we have not factored for the purpose of the CRAR or uh, that. Uh, Sorry, how much you mentioned? 1,200 crore. 1,200 crore, and yeah. uh, this is including the 325 you made this no, no, no. this quarter. It is apart from 1,200 crore, so 1,200 crore COVID provision, ECL provision we created 250 crore, and now 325 crore is the additional provision. So total is like 1,775. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Himanshu Taluja from Aditya Birla Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, congratulations for a uh, healthy set of the numbers. Just few questions at my end. Uh, so probably if I uh, do recollect, as uh, you mentioned in uh, the past one or uh, two calls, in the past one call, that your total ECL uh, provisions might uh, requirement could be around 2,500 crore. 
and possibly if i do agree that you hold a excess for provisions of 1725 is that right uh, is this the right to uh, uh, look at yes yes fair second is yes sir on your margins uh, uh, we have seen because our general expectations that we may do see a margin decline in this quarter but uh, your yield on advances uh, has uh, actually been uh, rise by 31 basis point can you just explain what triggered this uh, uh, rise in yield on advances by 31 basis point in this quarter uh, uh, you, you see that uh, yield has improved because that uh, uh, we have also uh, improved our mcla so one of the reason that and you know that uh, overall silpage uh, other than agriculture it has not increased so overall interest income has increased and we have taken various steps to contain the our cost cost of fund and cost of deposit uh, you know that uh, we have not uh, gone for the wild well de deposit higher cost so in one side that uh, our yield on advances has improved and uh, other other side the we are able to contain the cost that's why uh, you see that nim has also improved okay so now your earlier guidance of 3 and a half sort of a nim guidance for fy24 and uh, i think uh, in the last con call that you expected that that was a peak of 3.86 and may possibly from tokyo onwards you may see a decline uh, now will you revise your guidance now on the margins and uh, what sort of a, sustain, a sustainable margins you think uh, uh, we should uh, one should assume Uh, see, if you see, you know the deposit. Uh, there is a false uh, stance from the Reserve Bank uh, on the repo side. But then the uh, here and there normalisation is happening between the deposit rates and the lending rates across the industry. Now, uh, you know the the. Sir, sorry, I can't hear you. Can you be a little bit louder? Sorry. No. Now is it okay? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, if you see, there is a normalisation happening across the industry on the deposit rates as well as on the lending rates. Though there is a uh, depot from the stance from the Reserve Bank of India. Now, uh, almost if you see the name which is in for particularly which you asked for the Bank of Maharashtra, we still maintain on a conservative side 3.5 to 3.6 plus minus 0.02. But at the same time, it is a very good observation from your side. that there is an increase in the nim what we said see what happens now that uh, for us our side of balance sheet we know the business so in the last also when we were talking about you know some personal something so the basis again goes to the credit underwriting which is how you underwriting what is the target group and what is the risk mitigation so if you see we are very clear on the business side that which portfolio we are going to underwrite and how we are going to underwrite so if we get an opportunity so switch from the lower yielding to better yielding within the range because the one is on the lim side the another is if you see our presentation where we the double a triple a and the other asset which we have given and shown you will see a good chunk that the quality of asset is good so in that chunk say moving from triple b to a side and if we are in a position to maintain from a from a lower version of roi to a better margin so i think that is what we have looked into from account to account and we have moved probably that is one of the point uh, uh, the avenues which are used so it has given a yield and certainly there were certain accounts which were yet to reset in the last quarter so when they are resetting you know so you see it around 2 to 2.5 percent repo was changed so if you see the transmission it was not to that extent but then when reset has happened that has also given a good so i would say if you take a june quarter the impact will come in the september quarter and the early september quarter which was reset has given the impact in the last two months probably this is the one more thing which has helped in improving the nim so still we continue to maintain i would not say guidance but then we continue to our expectation of 3.5 to 3.6 Plus minus two percent going forward. Yeah, sir. Sir, last question. Uh, when we are going to see, according to you, a normalised tax rate? Uh, uh, how much uh, DTA benefits we are still yet to accrue? And uh, 
when you think um, from which year onwards you believe you are going to see a normalized uh, tax rate that's the last question yeah so since we are holding the carry forward losses of 8000 crore income tax losses sorry that losses carry forward with roughly 8000 crore Mm-hmm. so that benefit going to approve for an, uh, another uh, two two years 24 uh, up to 24 25 see do, we do not expect any uh, actual in, in income tax liability and uh, the the tax provision is uh, either it is dt or universal or dt so we are having dt of roughly 4000 crore dt assets so uh, that benefit we will continue to get for the carry forward of losses ओके यस सर थैंक्स अ लॉट थैंक यू बिफोर वी टेक द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन अ रिमाइंडर टू ऑल पार्टिसिपेंट्स दैट यू मे प्रेस स्टार एंड 1 टू आस्क अ क्वेश्चन आवर नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम द लाइन ऑफ दर्शिल फ्रॉम क्राउन कैपिटल प्लीज गो अहेड हेलो गुड इवनिंग सर होप आई एम ऑडिबल यस हेलो Yes, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for taking our question, sir, and congratulations on a great set of results. So, I just wanted to know, maybe on a longer term basis, what kind of ROI can we expect, and the guidance that we are giving for, you know, 23-24 percent of growth, is that uh, for can that sustain for the next three, four years? Yeah, ROI. If you see for last, you uh, know, uh, five quarter. It is our one percent, and we have given the guidance. Our rule between holding between one zero to zero to one point four zero. So that is our uh, that guideline, and you, you can see that uh, the our uh, your current ROA, it is within the that range. So ROA ROA will continue to be above one point two zero percent. Oh, answer with. Uh, uh, great brother loan also will that also continue in this range only uh, for the next two three years? What kind of guidance can we have? Uh, overall guidance for next two three years that we feel regarding ROI? No, no. So with regarding our loan book and credit growth, so will it sustain of above twenty percent? Yes, sir. Twenty percent can sustain. Maybe one or two percent here and there depends upon the situation. but otherwise uh, but definitely it is possible oh that's great to know sir uh, yeah, yeah that's all my questions all the best sir. look forward to the great result thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen you may press star and one to ask a question our next question is from the line of samrat jado from prosperity wealth advisors please go ahead Hi, good evening, and uh, congratulations for a good set of numbers. I just wanted to understand that uh, what uh, number of branches we did last quarter, and what's the target for this quarter, and overall in the year. Last two quarter we have opened uh, the seventy-eight branches. We have opened last quarter, and two uh, one we have opened around sixty branches. So total till date. 60 branches. 60 branches. Yes, yes, yes. And what is the target for the year? Target of the year another half lakh to five branches. Sorry, I the voice was not clear. Uh, what is the number? Yes. 125 branches. Yes. 125 branches. 125 branches. Yes. Okay, and this would be across India, as you said in the last part. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's it. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Kurvinder Singh from Fortuna Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I wanted to understand your SMA two uh, for accounts which are uh, smaller in size. Uh, the SMA, the less than five crores accounts. so regarding that uh, less than 5 crore uh, earlier we were giving the 1 crore above and uh, if you compare with the jeep today it has come down so as uh, total sma was 1272 crore in june now it was brought down to 1238 crore 
ओके ऑल अच्छा थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू थैंक यू Our next question is from the line of Akash Jain from Ajkon Global Services Limited. Please go ahead. Congratulations, sir, for a very good set of numbers. I have few questions. One is, what is the guidance for credit cost? Uh, I think it is around 1.23 percent at the moment. So going forward for the whole year, what kind of credit cost we are expecting? Hmm. So uh, if you see the credit cost. So uh, at present our net uh, NPA is uh, 0.23 percent, and almost that uh, uh, all, uh, almost every slippers we are providing for. So the one point is because of that the 100 percent almost 100 percent provision made. But if you talk about the direct norm, as per direct norm, the uh, that uh, trade cost is uh, below 0.5 percent. So and what we are expecting, though this time the slippers in the higher side. Uh, in the uh, coming quarters, it will come down. So definitely, the credit cost will automatically come down. But having said that, since uh, the bank is providing almost 100% on the slippers, so uh, on books you will find that credit cost has there. But definitely, as per our knowledge, it is on the very low side. I think, like you know, by keeping in view the circumstances which is being right now, I think you may consider on a safer side one percent plus minus 10 to 15 basis points. Yes. I think that is a Uh, quite a good expectation. Okay, so so 0.55% is per as per I I recommend, correct? Yes, yes. Okay, and so one more question. In the past discussion, uh, uh, we had said that uh, we would be focusing on mid corporates, and the growth will come from mid corporates and in sectors like uh, pharma, textile, engineering, goods, auto, ancillary, airports, effluent treatment plant, like projects of Namami Gange. So are we sticking? to this sector or we are going beyond this sector uh no it is very good and uh, really good to see that you are remembering that so thanks for that but then the bank as a strategic point is uh, continuing that and in the last quarter also if you see around uh, around 800 crores the textile we have gone around i think 5 to 600 crore pharma we have gone and uh, we one more thing we said when we talked about mid corporate uh, particularly that uh, export is our focus so i think since last quarter also i am very sure that our export also we have increased for i think more than 6 to 7 crores so what we are now uh, looking at is not only the sector sector as you said is correct uh, the water treatments and other things the second one also on the on the auto ev side the third is uh, that as you said textile and pharma and uh, these sectors we are looking but uh, the more so we are looking to the if it is an export oriented site that is also it is our focus is and so my uh, third question is on the gold loan book so what is the size of the gold loan book as on uh, q2 and uh, what kind of yield on advances we are enjoying on gold loans Loan is eight thousand crore. Eight thousand crore. Eight thousand crore of uh, gold loan uh, book is there, and uh, uh, I give nine percent. Nine percent. See, the year-on-year growth of gold loan witnessed about uh, two thousand three hundred fifty-eight crores, okay. and YGD is a twenty-seven percentage growth. We are going with the robust growth. The last, uh, see, actually, Bank of Maharashtra was not. Uh, at all in the gold loan business whereas uh, many banks were there for the for decades which we have started very late about few years before but it's uh, quite uh, um, steadily speaking up and we could see that uh, not only the numbers growing the steadily the npa is also come down our npa as of today is only 0.18% the reason is that almost every month we go for a auction in a time date as soon as it became slippage we release the funds and we see a lot of uh, uh, scope for improvement in this particular area particularly if you see the banks of like uh, you know canara bank and indian indian versus bank even so called old generation banks they are all thriving on the gold loan where bank of maharashtra is now just now focusing uh, considering you are also on previously somebody is also questioning how there is a uh, I mean our advance book is sustainable these are the areas that are uh, not in the focus we can uh, build up this uh, portfolio going going forward 
so what is the aspiration in our gold loan book uh, what kind of uh, book we see in future we are expecting 25% growth year to year on our gold loan okay. Okay. and my last question is on nirc so i think in the past discussion we have said that we had identified around 2000 to 2500 crores worth of i said i think uh, 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 as on Q4 F4 23. So, what is the status as of now? Uh, NRCL, uh, you know that is a dynamic list. Today, 11 accounts are shortlisted, amounting to 1,600 crore. Uh, two are realized uh, during this Q1 and Q2, uh, and uh, few more will be realized in this uh, coming two quarters. Thank you. That is all from my side. Congratulations. All the best for the future. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Ashwani Maheshwari from Sky High Ventures. Please go ahead. Yes. Uh, congratulations on the great set of numbers, sir. Uh, my question is that out of total provisions of 984 crores during the quarter, uh, 587 crore pertains to the loan book, and uh, what is the nature of the remaining balance of 237 crores, sir? and uh, what are the reasons for the increase from 237 crores? During the quarter two of the last year, provision is provision is five crore. Total out of nine eighty five crore, if you see the provision for uh, NPH five ninety seven crore, and standard we have made three hundred sixty two crore. As I told that uh, out of three sixty crore, three twenty five crore we have made provision over and above required as per the RAC norm. So you know that present economic scenario and uh, war like situation. so and it may impact the crude oil and uh, definitely there would be impact on the not only the international but domestic there would be impact so for that uh, we are keeping additional provision of 325 crore yes sir mr Ashwini, you are not audible. May I request you to unmute your line, please? Oh uh, yeah, that's all, sir. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, sir. <coughs> Our next question is from the line of Ashok Ajmera from Atcon Global. Please go ahead, sir. Ah, uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity second time. Ah. Uh, I have got a couple of data points, sir, and some discussion on the uh, just now the replies given. So, uh, sir, uh, Ashish sir just now said I think that uh, uh, in the growing list of the sector for the for the credit growth, EV electric you know vehicles is also in focus. So, I would just like to know that this EV loan scheme is for the individuals uh, vehicles or uh, are we going to form a policy for uh, Giving credit to the bulk uh, number of the vehicles to be bought for the commercial use or to be rented out to the corporate as a business, is that any such uh, thing is there in for the EV uh, credit growth? Yeah, uh, see EV. There are uh, if you see there are two things. One is the manufacturer OEM level. So actually that is what uh, the focus was. So we have given few sanctions on that, which are projects and underway, which are very good groups. so that was one thing and the second is certainly uh, you know when it comes to a corporate governance or a esg point of view so uh, being it is very prudent to be a part of the society on the environmental side so the bank is also extending the home loans on the ev or for individual as you said on the commercial side so that actually right now we have not formed any assets thing but then uh, the exploration is on that if any uh, you know the good proposal but yes there were certain proposals where you know the electric buses for the transport system as a whole where it was well balanced for a certain metro level some the certain very good groups so that actually we considered so that is but then as you said a smaller vehicle send all that we have not yet explored as such on a commercial side but yes it is a prudent to be part of society and the bank is very good in extending evs at a concessional rates uh on on this ev side so i think uh, that is the the reply on your ask 
yes, sir. sir now uh, this this uh, continuing the discussion on the extra provision made you know like 325 crore just now the reply was given uh, when we already have the almost i think that 1200 crore extra provision on covid uh, you know we already have that much buffer with us uh, is there any a need for continuously provide making higher provisions and restricting the profit growth so what is the mindset uh, like how much buffer you want to build up in a bank a small i mean comparatively a bank of 4 lakh crore bank how much buffer or a bank of the credit of 183 lakh crore or something you already have 1200 crore now you built another 325 crore so 1525 crore so is there any any target or something that you will go on providing or extra provisions making extra provisions and limiting the profits for some more time no it is not uh, restricting the uh, uh, pro uh, profit for example what our cfo was telling and the board of the also opinion little uh, difficult situation wherever it is there you know that now the petrol uh, these uh, prices are crude prices increased by 10 to 12 uh, yes. dollars per barrel and like kind of situations always have a more provisions and as and when it is not required we can utilize for that otherwise we can take it to capital and uh, in especially during the half year we have seen that little small stress we have seen in case of agriculture advances where especially in marathwada region where drought conditions are happening so you know that climatic and the climate conditions are always nowadays making changes so if it is not required we will utilize for our tcl provisioning and we are created for that that is the purpose only thing is last year we have given ecl specific name we have given this time no specific name is not given so otherwise this is a accumulator provision can be utilized since the covid why we are not fully utilized during the covid time some of the assets we have restructured including some retail assets and mazani account some small portfolio one to 1.5 percent prop portfolio 1500 still continuing as a restructured book the restructured book we have given on an average provision of 20 25 percent but it is an additional cushion available if anything comes any changes anything uh, interest rate scenario once suppose still we thought of interest rate scenario is uh, uh, coming down but it is still continuing so once the interest rate scenario is favorable these provisions can be returned back that was the reason actually no, that definitely a very prudent measure sir sir few data data point uh, sir note number 14 the npa loan transferred outstanding amount of 443 crore in consideration the amount realized is 208 crore can i know how much was the provision made on this 443 crore that's the one so this is uh, uh, 100% provision has been made. This is the return of account. So everything, uh, whatever recovery will be in P and L only. Uh, so the are, entire two, so the entire 208 crore has come into P and L only, isn't it? Oh no. See, this we have not accounted for. The recovery has come because there is some legal issue in this account, and that is why we have kept it in advance. The recovery has been received. Uh, that is a return of account. so we'll uh, watch uh, in the next quarter and accordingly we'll account for so this entire 200 crore the additional profit is going to come in next yes, one or two yes, quarters yes. that will come in future so that some legal opinion we have taken and one the clear cut opinion get it then we will book it sir the second uh, note on note number 14 is that loans acquired 2906 crore where the tangible security is only 17.03% these are all um, i mean this the small uh, uh, what what is the nature of this 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 loans of 2906 crore which we have acquired this is our dh transaction that, that is a dh transaction including mfi okay so security coverage is only 17% yes sir that is but the duration also is only 12 to 15 basis uh, 15 months our is duration So my next is sir on the restructured assets. I mean, uh, outstanding is now 3,169 crore, and as you said that 25%. So 25% you count only on that 1,200 crore, or you count 
entire 3169 crore yes sir the entire amount on the entire amount you expect expectation means uh, is a uh, we have kept it for extreme situation comes point taken sir now only on the last question, last uh, night like observation or a question you may consider is that on taxation uh, just now the reply was given on the dta and uh, uh, you know 8000 crore and 4000 crore and the benefit is going to be uh, accrued over a period of next two years because even if we make a profit of 4000 crore a year still it will take two years so but uh, but you know this provision in the books which affects our final net profit pat in the books is very erratic in the last quarter it was 205 crore in this quarter it is only 16 crore whereas both the quarters are for the current year only so so uh, can i understand uh, what is the logic of uh, having so erratic provisions when nothing is changing and actually no liability is accruing uh, it is not erratic you see that deferred tax assets creation is two counts one is based upon the uh, assets assets depreciation the other one is losses and the third one is provisioning. So wherever provisioning, whatever it is there earlier we have done, that deferred as asset is already cleared. And there is no room for further deferred, deferred as assets uh, reversal. Now deferred as assets kept in the books is only regarding depreciation of such assets and other area only. So that is as per as 22 we have to continue. What regarding this uh, income tax uh, loss is actually the loss booked by the bank is more than 8,000 crores. That is another two to three years. That this will continue. Now here afterwards this deferred tax assets uh, uh, reversal will not be there. Last time it was 200 crores. The last uh, component of the deferred tax assets reversed during the last quarter. I think it is very clear. Uh, not uh, anyway. I think uh, I'll, I'll I'll get in touch offline with the. Ah, yes, as you can touch with the uh, CFO. He will clear it that. Thank you. A reminder to all participants: you may press star and one to ask a question. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of our question and answer session. I would now like to hand the conference over to Sri A.S. Raji for closing remarks. I am Vijay Kumar on behalf of our uh, MD and CEO Sri A.S. Raji and the Executive Director Sri Ashiji and top management consists of all the general managers including CFO Mr. Uh, Vijay Srivatsavji. On behalf of uh, Bank of Mah Maharashtra, Maha Bank Parivar, can we sincerely thanks to all the analysts who have participated. We appreciate uh, uh, the uh, questions, the uh, appreciate your appreciate uh, quality questions. And if anything is left out, you would like to you know, get the clarification, you are, uh, feel, feel free to send a mail. We will reply to you. Thank you very much once again. Thank you. On behalf of Bank of Maharashtra, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.